بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه سلم اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا الحمد لله I'm so um, excited to be here with you all and with أستاذ سامية um, this is uh, so we did a joint collaboration here we actually talked about this um, topic for a while first I want to just uh, talk you know uh, intro um are, are there issues with the audio can you is there i can hear anybody you. else okay it, it cut out for a second but we're good now alhamdulillah okay alhamdulillah alhamdulillah so um uh bless her usada samia um uh she is mashallah a uh teacher of quran and she connects um she does an uh, awesome job you really connecting women to uh really reflect on the quran and connect deeply with the quran and um the way i actually got to know her is um i'm not sure how i got uh to got on her page in instagram but i saw that she has a um special child a special needs child uh maryam and um and I had just, I think it was about a week before, a few days ago, before that, I had posted this hadith, subhanAllah, that <clears throat> where the Prophet says to Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqas, um, he says, Hal illa bi Hal tur tur tun Are you not, you are not, you are, are you not given victory and given rizq? sustenance except by the weak of you, weak ones of from you and um i remember i made a note of that that if we truly understood if we truly embodied this message from our prophet how we could um you know how different it would be in terms of the way we view those who are weaker the way we view who um those who are challenged those who are uh um, you know, uh, who have special needs because they would be, um, I'm not sure if, excuse me, if my video is bouncy, I'm just going to put it somewhere. So hopefully it's not bouncy too much. So how, uh, I love it's better. So if we truly embodied that, that, that the spirit of this hadith, that the weak from amongst us, from the ummah, they we get our riz, not just our riz, our victories through them. I mean, how special would we view somebody who is weak? Like when they walked into the room, if you know that this is the person, you are getting your risk from your your food, your drink, your knowledge, your spiritual states. You get it because of this person who's weak in your family or in the community, in in our ummah that we get it from our weak. How different would we as a community view those people? We would raise them. We would be like, celebrate them. We're like, alhamdulillah for these people who are weak because were it not for them, we wouldn't have our risk and our, our victories. Victories meaning in the battlefield, right? This was a hadith where I see the Prophet sallallahu them mentioned to Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn al -Qas. He was walking around. He had, he had, <clears throat> he was a strong man. He was a, powerful man and he was walking around like you know like with with his strength with his you know and you know be like he 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 had he had talked to somebody he's like somebody who kills like 10 people isn't just like the same as a weak man who's sitting at home basically there was like this conversation going on and the prophet sallallahu said that right so this is the this is the this so i when i went on uh said sammy's page i saw that she had a uh special needs a child and i just sent her this hadith um uh because I, I i wanted to just remind her that that it's so it's so special and so that's how we got to know each other but subhanallah what is it what's beautiful is that i just uh we both feel like we've uh we've we have like it, it felt like we know each other we've known each other for a long time Mashallah. so that's a little bit you know on the topic but um on topic of how we're doing this together too. So um Bismillah, inshallah. Uh, you know, with uh what we're we'll do is I'll start with my part kind of part of the talk and inshallah Samia will um 
and join uh, and give her part. Um, as for myself, I am, uh, my name is Shaisa Makul. I, alhamdulillah, I was blessed to study in Syria for 10 years and before that um, in America, in New York City, where I grew up with uh, Sheikh Abdullah Adhemi, um, you know, going to California at that time, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, Sheikh Muhammad Yaqubi, and then traveling to Syria for 10 years where um, I studied with uh, Sheikh Hassan and Hindi, Sheikh Sabra Nas, who's uh, you know comes here and still um, very much um, benefiting from him, and other many other shiuch in uh, Damascus. I've been blessed to um, you know have a certification in Hanifi fiqh from Sheikh Sabra Nas and from other shiuch, and also just the six books and beyond the six books. So um, my passion, I would say, is um, is something that was inspired uh in me or f the seed put in me when i was very young was from sheikh abdullah Atemi, which is really to connect women to the prophet so um here you know on this topic about from pain to power and i really want to talk about look at the prophets the stories of the prophets and we have so much in the, those stories of because we know that the greatest people who have bala, who have to ibtira, tribulations and trials are prophets, right? We know that they are the ones who have the greatest tribulation. Why are our, our prophets Allah told us that? He said the ones who are have the greatest trials are the prophets and those who are more um uh the most beloved and then after them the most the ones who are the most uh, more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um subhanAllah with what we see happening with what you know really uh heart wrenching and heartbreaking um uh, uh the situation for our, for our brothers and sisters in the Gaza and all those who are suffering and even you know our brothers and sisters in the Gaza it's a different level. It's a different level like the pain and the suffering, it's its a different level, right? So it's what what I'm uh, going to speak about is more, you know, is, you know, we can, we can't imagine, right? Is simply put, we can't imagine what they're going through. What they're going through is like, it's a different level and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them relief. And just the amount of respect and how we look up to those people is, is just is again at a different level because one of the things that we um, as Muslims, people of when we come into the gatherings like of the people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they view each other, you see when someone has been tried and tried and tried again, that person has a different rank in that majlis. Right, you immediately know. I apologize, my screen keeps moving. You immediately know that person who has, who comes with, comes into the room, and you know they've lost. You know, uh, their whole family is just another level. They've lost, you know, one child, two child, three children, or they lost uh, f several members of their family. That person is is a special person. You know, you know, when the people, when you're in a gathering with the people of Allah and the people of dhikr and the people of knowledge, that person who comes in with having many trials, you, that person has special rank. You immediately, and it all comes back from this hadith of the Prophet that the people who are the most, who have the most tribulations, the people who are less paranoid, are most beloved to Allah, right? After the prophets. So I remember learning, um, seeing, I had a friend in Syria and I didn't see her for a while. And I recent, you know, connected with her later up recently, but I learned she had about four or five miscarriages. And I remember just thinking, wow, that this person is so special. This person is so special that she's had something so many difficulties in her life that that's that's something special even you know after like stillbirths and things like that and you know that 
you, we as as people of as Muslims, that has to be that has to be something that we can respect that that respect we give that we th- this person has gone through a lot. That means they have a rank, they have a special rank with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, we know that from our tradition, and so um, uh, traditionally. But why? Where do we get all of that? Where do we get all that, that this person has a higher rank because of more pain or more tribulations? It's all from our tradition. And so that's in general, of course, but I want to, inshallah, I'm going to speak of, you know, specifics about, um, I'm just going to be referring to my notes here, about some specifically uh, what our prophet, what the prophets went through. And I'm going to start with our, own prophet, of course, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and uh, the dua he made. Uh, so the Sami is always telling me she wants to hear about this dua. So I'm like, I'm going to start with it. Um, although, you know, the uh, the 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 uh, the talk itself was brewing for some time. And actually, when uh, this Ramadan, when I read, um, when you go through the Quran, every single time you get something, a different flavor, a different, you know, inspiration. And um, subhanAllah, this time I really, I paused with the story of Sina Ayyub and the trials. And of course, you know, with the, like the backdrop and the front drop and every, everywhere around us, what's going on with Gaza. And but when I, when I remember the story of Sina Ayyub, oh my goodness, it just, you know, it just, we have to go back to these stories of the Quran and of our prophets to keep things in perspective, to keep things in perspective as reminders of to keep our, you know, what they say to keep our back straight and our heads level, right? And our heads, literally, as, as Muslims, we are, our, our heads are always high. Because, right, our izza, lillahi, wali rasuli, wali mu'mini. Or so our izza, we get our izza, we're our pride through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, but we we have to go back. We take that power through, we take that uh, madad, the madad with power and the help through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the uh, Quran. So, <clears throat> um, but I will start with, you know, that beautiful dua that our Prophet ﷺ made in Ta'if when he was returning from Ta'if, right? He, uh, the dua that is a very famous dua where he says, Allahumma, I just want to say this Alhamdulillah benefit us from um uh this this gathering and this talk and make it a means of mercy for us for us, for ourselves, our families, and uh inshallah. So um so he says and this is coming back. From Ta'if, and Ta'if after the, it's, um, it's not what has already happened. What has already happened? It's it's it was a point of this is in the tenth year, right? This is a um, his his uh, beloved wife has passed away. His his uncle, who uh, also beloved uncle, his beloved uncle. He, he didn't become Muslim, he was a beloved uncle. And this is something to really, um, for those uh, those who are uh, converts, really take, take take power from that. Excuse me, that's my daughter banging on the door. And then I, so I told my other daughter to take care of him. Give me So, um, uh, you know, just to mention, uh, to take, uh, to take, um, uh, madad also from uh, uh, all our madad, all our help is from the seerah and the, from the sunnah and from the Quran, right? So it, whether you're, you would become Muslim or, you know, you, uh, you've reverted or whatever it is, but that's just on the side note that, you know, his, um, really beloved uncle, he died as a non-Muslim. Right. And that is something that he loved his uncle so much. He loved his uncle so much, but he couldn't, he didn't become Muslim. 
right? And that at how, what a test, what a test. SubhanAllah. So now he's gone to thought if as kind of like, you know, uh, let's see if there's opening over there. Let's see if there's an opening over there. And, um, uh, and you know, was, he stayed there for about 10 days and the, the, the iqbal or the adam iqbal really the 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 uh, the response from the people of taif was so harsh and so it was so demeaning it was so humiliating that um that you know driving him out sallallahu alaihi wasallam throwing stones at him and all this is so so you know you, uh, that it wouldn't be a response to a a just there, where's the humanity? Where's the humanity? Let alone, uh, he's a prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he's calling you to that which will save you, right? And calling you to that which will save you and that will, which will, you know, he he's coming for your sake, for your salvation. And now when he, so he's come, when he comes back, he makes this dua. So I'm, I won't go all into that, but just just the, the setup. You know, he's also been calling the Quraysh for the last 10 years. And some of the scholars said, after those 10 years, you know how many people became Muslim? 40. 40 people. After those people, when when the Ansar eventually, you know, accepted and came, came from Medina. To be, the, when the Hijrah happened, there were, in Mecca, there were about 40 Muslims. But... Those 40 were like, they could move mountains. They could move mountains for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what, what's the, that's the difference between us for now and those, those people then, right? Because, um, you know, I, I, uh, I mentioned there was, you know, people saying there were so many people in Umrah, mashallah, it's so crowded in the Haram. And honestly, you know, I had gone to Umrah in February, and that I saw a lot of, there was a lot of crowds, and it, it honestly, it made me sad, because I said, these, you know, with all our crowdedness, with our, all our numbers, we can't, how much can we move, right, it's like the Prophet Sallallahu said, we are froth, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us froth, we make us people of worth, so going back to this, excuse me about that, but um, going back to this, panala, that when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi see how he's trying, he had 40 people, at this time and he's still working every single year going to all the tribes in hajj now he's going to thought and he, that the the rejection that they give him there the rejection the humiliation um that that he has he is a, he's always a victor as i say but how they try to humiliate him right and demean him and so this dua he says Oh Allah, I complain to you about the weakness of my strength. And my humiliation, my humiliation, or my weakness to people, my my littleness uh, uh, to people, like they don't they don't give me any worth. They have little worth for for me. Right? Ya Arhamur Rahimin, O most merciful of the merciful ones. Anta Rabbul Mustalafin wa Anta Rabbi, you are the most, uh, you are the, um, uh, Anta Rabbul Mustalafin. This is, uh, has not been translated in my translation here. Anta Rabbul Mustalafin, you are the Lord of those who are weak, and you are my Lord. Uh, to whom do you entrust me? To um to an uh, to a someone who is far, who you have who um, attacks me, or even to uh, someone who is uh close. Uh, Excuse me. Here in this uh, narration, I have to whom do you entrust me to? Um, I think there is something missing here, though. In the chat, someone put it in the chat. I think it's on page 1. 
if that helps. Oh, yeah. I, I actually don't see it. Let me see. Or have you appointed my enemy as a master of my affairs to one who does not care for me? So um, there is a, a, another uh, wording here. Oh, ila uh, qariban. You know, there is, or to someone who is... Um, uh, a relative who has taken care of malaktahu, uh, oh, e malaktahu amri, or to someone who is close, yeah, a close one or a relative who you've, you've caused uh, to take hold of my affairs. Yes. Um, there is a little bit difference in the translation that I'm seeing uh, or even in the word. So I did actually translate her, but I'm like, there's something missing in even the translation. So, um, if you are not angry over me, if your ghadab, if your anger is not upon me, then I don't care. So, so here, what I love about this, Chris, I'm just going to translate it at first. Let me just be patient enough to translate it, finish translating it. So, um, if your anger is not upon me, then I don't care. Uh, but your afia, the, your, the well-being that you give me is more expansive for me, is more easier for me. Uh, uh, I seek refuge in your face, in the, in the nur of your face, in the light of your face, which from which whom the, the from which the darkness is has um, shown and it's like um, it's like beamed out like it's like uh, you know uh, beamed out is brightened out shown out shimmered out from the darknesses the lights have come out from the darknesses but by the light of your face subhanahu wa ta'ala and and by which the matter of this world and the next world has uh, been made um, rectified and been made um, uh, been made um, rectified or been made asalih, been made correct, been made right. So everything is made possible, made right by what? By the nuri which he is Everything is rectified. Everything is good and salih. Salih is the the opposite of broken. And this is another uh, like another point I'll, I'll come back to. Uh, and I um, seek refuge. So he's saying, I seek refuge in the light of your face that that your anger befalls upon me or you are... Um, or again, another sakhatuk is another word for anger and uh, like another synonym or a syn uh, synonym for anger, or that your um uh, that your anger bef comes down upon me or befalls me, or is upon me. There is no blame upon you until you are satisfied. And there is no power or strength except with you. Now, subhanAllah, what here, what um what we can learn so much from this job, right? So even if we're we haven't done a half, a hundredth, a thousandth, a millionth of what the Prophet ﷺ did for this job, what we can learn from it, he he says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, complaining to Allah, not complaining to anyone else, say, Ilayka ashkullah for quwati. I complain to you the weakness of my strength. My strength and the um and the the lack of uh, of qilla tihidati, the lack of uh he is the lack of tricks. I don't have any tricks up my sleeve. I can't do anything. I don't have any other trick. I don't have any any other um power and any other you know way out. Uh, the, the the lack of strength and the lack of ways out I have I don't have anything and 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 my humiliation for his people so he's complaining he is complaining he's complaining but who he's complaining to 
Arham Rahimin. And he is complaining to the, the only one who loves to hear complaints to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so here, when he complains, but he complains about himself and his weakness, just subhanAllah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how, what is the, the weakness that he has, right? How much he, his relentlessness, he was relentless in calling them to Allah. But here he complains. So he's not complaining about what the people of Ta'if did. He's not complaining how they threw stones at him, how they kicked him, how how they how little uh, respect he is. He's complaining out how little respect he has towards them, like in their eyes, right? He, it's like it's a kind of Hawani. He, he he almost attributes that to himself. Right? And what is this? What is this? Is that it, he is? This is like. Um, seeking mercy, seeking the lutf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, using your weakness, saying, this is what ha has happened to me, and have mercy on me, this is what happened to me, this is, I'm hurt, I'm hurt, this is, this is my weakness, this is my weakness, and laying it out for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and asking for his mercy through your, through, through the, through that pain, through that hurt, one of the things that I always, I always make this, you know, this um, comparison, like with, with mothers. Why? Because our prophets Allah and make this comparison with mothers to show he, he, you know, try to bring closer the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by showing us, you know, the mercy of mothers, right? And he said, he says, وسلم, when he saw that woman, she, there was a woman running around a, a captive. She was a captive. Um, and she was running and she was looking for her baby. And she, when she saw her baby, she 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 found him, she grabbed him and she held him to her chest and she started nursing him. And he said, do you think, when he saw her, he said, do you think she will throw this baby in the fire? Do you, would she ever throw her baby in the fire? And the Sahaba said, of course not. He said, Allah is more, uh, he's, he's uh, he has more, um, love for you basically more care for you more hesitation to throw you in the fire than this woman to throw the than this woman does for her to throw her child into the fire he has more love basically he has more love you know he would how would he throw you into the fire he has more than that for you right and the the um knowing how uh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when I, when, you know, remembering the mercy of Allah, we, we, when going back to the mercy of mothers, when you go to your mother and you're crying and you're hurt, what is, or, or when your child comes to you and your, 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 your child, your young child is crying and hurt, how much mercy do you have for that child? Right? How much mercy? are you filled with with that child and especially if they're saying oh that person did something bad to me and they the, you know if your child got beat up if you, somebody told, said something to your child that broke their heart and your child comes how how much mercy do you feel for your child and this is what we use this is what we use what we want to use for when going to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the dua we want to this is the kind of dua we want when we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our pain that oh Allah look where i am look what they've done to me look what what i'm going through look what i'm going through and we 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 invoke the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our pain as our Prophet ﷺ taught us, and there is, it's narrated in another tradition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, an in the munkasarati qulubihim min ajli. I am it with those who are brokenhearted for my sake. I am with those, with those meaning I'm close to those who are brokenhearted for my sake. Those who are brokenhearted for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are brokenhearted for, for, for out of pain. Right when we go to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with our pain, the Prophet Sallallahu is teaching us through this. Um, and he says, so he says, uh, you know, when he complained, this is a complaint to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I'm just going to go quickly because there's 
I wanted to mention Sina Ayyub and Sina Ibrahim alayhi salam. I'm going to go uh, as I'm coming, actually um, uh, running out of time here. Um, and here he says, uh, when he says, I, but your afia is better for me, he says, I don't care. I don't care as long as you are not angry with me. As long as you are not angry with me, I don't care. Right? But he says, but your afia, the well being that you give me, is more easier for me and more expensive for me. And then he says, I seek refuge in the light of your continence, that the in all the vulumat, all the darknesses have been lightened up by the nur of your face. Nur wajhik. And saluha alayhi amru dunya wa Sadih, as I mentioned, is the opposite of broken. And broken is what we find ourselves in when we are all in pain and tribulation. What do we find ourselves in? We're, we're broken, right? We say, I'm broken inside. If you lose someone you loved, if you've, you know, going through tribulation, if you've been divorced, our Prophet ﷺ said this is, he said, uh, uh, he said, uh, a woman who has uh, been divorced, she is broken. Breaking her and divorcing her is breaking her. Divorcing her is breaking her. That is the wording he used. Divorcing her is breaking her. And I, um, I, I gave a little um, kind of a little reminder for um, Sister Sumeya. She's from, uh, and she thrived, which is a a platform for women who are divorcees with some women who have divorced who have been divorced and i i mentioned this as um using that word of the prophet as your power as your power because to go to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say you know even though this is just privately in your own realm because never um the muslim especially a woman who has been divorced the Prophet ﷺ wanted her to get back together you know get remarried take care of her as soon as possible you get back into the the community as as best as she could, you know, to the Muslim community to take care of her, and he would take care of her, you know. First and foremost, he was the one who would set up a place for her. Here you stay here, and then you know, you know, talking to Fatima bin Taqais, you stay in this house, and then when you're done, come come to me, and don't be quick about who you will marry. I mean, he wanted to tend to her, this divorced woman by himself. He wanted to. He took care of her. He took care of her housing. He took care of who she's going to get married. But I'm going to help. You know, I'm going to. You know, ask me to because I, I, he wanted to guide her, show her who was the best person for her. He wanted to take care of her. So it's not for public. Oh, I'm I'm so broken and give me this and give me this. No, but go in your private realm. See, I you know to uh, and this was my message to to this platform that you know in your private realm say this is I was broken. So you are the one to fix me, right? Where the salah, salah is the opposite of broken, right? And so to use that, what our deen has given us, to use the wording of the Prophet Sallallahu go back to our deen, because our deen is all about mending. It's all about mending. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. one, uh, you know, uh, one of the, uh, I heard from actually Anis Tamra, who I, it was my teacher in Damascus, as a teen, inshallah, happy the Allah. She she would say the greatest sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu that he was Jabbarul Khawati. He was he would mend Jabbar is he would mend the broken, broken hearts. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jabbar al This is from the um sifa from the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is Jabbar al the one who mends broken hearts. Um if Ustaz Sami, can you would you allow me to just quickly? Um, I, I knew this was gonna happen. Whenever I prepare for something, I prepare way too much. And that's why I would say it's better for me not to prepare because you know I go in with a few ideas and just say that quickly. But I actually prepared for this and I was like, I have so much to say about Sina Ayub and Sina Ibrahim Ali Sina. Um, maybe uh if you are short on time, we can always do maybe another session just for. I feel like just for Sina Ayub, the story of Sina Ayub is so amazing, subhanAllah. But um, is that, Bismillah. So, <laughs> so I will, um, I'll just uh, start with Sina Ayub is the prophet that is actually known to have the greatest, the the most tribulations. The most tribulations was the, the you know, when you think about 
about the prophet that had the greatest tribulations was going to mean outwardly, right? We, as we said, we we know um, that the greatest of the prophets were our prophets. Allah, we said that he had the greatest tribulations. So um, outwardly, he had the greatest tribulations. So he in um, uh, he says. Uh, what uh no this is the other uh ayah the the first ayah with good abdana ayub in nada rabu and nima senior shaytani binus me were adab uh remember ayub when he called out to his lord uh is nada rabba who is called when he called out to his word indeed the shaytan has touched me and musini subhanallah even the way he they complain is so much adab, so much adab that he, how he, uh, his, and once you see what he went through, the, the adab that he has is just, is mind blowing, right? So he says, he says, the shaitan has touched me, be by, um, binusp is like, uh, is like by tiredness uh, and adab and torture. And uh, and so he he says this, and then you know Allah Subhanahu wa Taala answers him in another in another surah. He says, "Wa'ayub inna da Rabbahu anni masini dur wa anta rahim rahimin." You know, uh, what Ayub and Job uh, is it Job or Jacob? I forgot uh, who they translated as. Mm -hmm. no, uh, Yaqub, sorry, Jacob is here. Job, you're right. Um, what you is nada rabbu and he must see your door said, uh, is uh, when he called out to his lord, uh, indeed, um, door or hardship, harm has has touched me, has befallen me, uh, and you are the most merciful of the merciful ones, right? And he says, you know, uh, in just saying that, and there's a, a point I, I want if we get a chance to go to the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, it's something very important the way that the prophets spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the, what they didn't say. Okay, that's very important. But look how he speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, um, there's a report saying that shay, Shaytan went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, you know, first of all, Sayyidina uh, Ayyub uh, alayhi salam, he had, he had a lot, he had many children a lot of wealth a lot of you know his he was very honored in his people so he he's a very wealthy person very well well to do well off um he had a lot of children so he had a wonderful family wonderful you know it was very comfortable before this so shaitan it's reported that shaitan goes to him so this is mentioned Defazid, he goes to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says is there anyone amongst your servants who if you give me authority over them would refrain from me i he wouldn't respond to me like the shaitan is saying so allah subhanahu wa says yes amdi ayub and even the word is amdi ayub you 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 get this it's so intimate it's so intimate it's my servant my slave ayub and so he came to so shaitan goes to him so he's like oh this is you know this is like one of those things that Oh, you say I can't do it. I'm going to do it anyway, right? Shaitan thinks he's going to be able to do this, right? So he goes to him and he starts whispering to him. And what comes to him with whispers. And while he saw Shaitan with his own with his own eyes, so I'm reading a translation of this khabar, of this uh, what's narrated in tafsir. And uh, so he sees Shaitan. Ayub, see, Ayub alayhi salam, he sees Shaitan. Um, and he doesn't, he pays no attention to him. And he has this waswasa and he doesn't pay any attention to him. So now Shaitan goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says, Oh Lord, he has withheld me from doing so. So give me control over his money. Like you've withheld me from anything else. Give me control over his money. And um so uh I think there's something wrong with the translation again here. Let me see in the Arabic. Okay. Khair. Because uh, I just uh so he he says uh, he used to come to me and say uh, to him, such and such has so shaitan would say you know so and so perished perished because of his wealth so give me power over his money and so God uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it he said go you have have you have authority over his money so he goes to him and uh, says you know he didn't care about his money so he went to you you tried he said and then he goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says he didn't care about his money so give me power over his children and then he so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him 
Now, every time, look at this. You know, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allowing me. See, this is like behind the scenes. That's why I feel, I thought it was really important because of especially what's happening with our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is involved in every single detail. There is no atom in existence can move exact, except with his permission. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave permission uh, uh, shaitan it, it is what it is to show people this rank of this prophet this rank of this prophet how much allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves him he says nobody no, shaitan he will not respond to you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to you he will not respond my servant will not respond to you go you want power over his wealth take it power over his children take it he will not respond to you this this is love this is intimate this is to raise his rank Remember that when we see our brothers and sisters and Gaza, what they're going through. So he says that he came and he shook the house completely. So he, ga he gave him power over his children. So Shaitan came and shook the house completely, destroying the house and destroying his children. And then he came to him and told him about it. He went to Ayub and told him, your house is destroyed. Your children are destroyed. And he didn't turn to him. He said he didn't even turn to him, Shaitan. Right? And he said, so he says, he goes back to Allah. He says, oh, Allah, he does not care about his money nor his children. So he need power over his body. So he declared him and he gave permission and he breathed on Ayub's skin. And it happened that his skin started falling off. He started getting sick and he suffered so much, Ill, so many illnesses and severe pain. And he remained in that affliction for years. And it became such that the people of his his own people who once you know really honored him they considered him like dirty like like why would allah you have no worth with allah who are you look at you look at you this is what they they started saying about him uh, you are you are no consequence allah wouldn't do this to you right and so he went out in the desert and no one would approach him the sina ayub and then shaitan came to his wife and said if your husband had sought help with me i would have saved him from his affliction now Shaitan is going through his wife and his wife being, you know, his wife was a righteous woman. She was righteous and she was an upright woman. So nobody think that, you know, but this is after years of affliction and affliction, and affliction. And then she, she just mentioned this to her husband. She just mentioned this, you know, oh, this is what Shaitan said. This was waswasa. This was waswasa that she had from years of affliction, right? But this was a wife of a prophet. Do not, we don't under, undermine um, the wives of the prophet or the, you know, they were the best of the few people, families of prophet. So she just mentioned this to him and he said to her, well, um, uh, uh, because he said, he swore, he said, well, if, um, by God, if, uh, so she mentioned this and he said, he made an oath. I see Ayub said, well, if God healed him, he would flog her because he got so angry. Like, how could you turn to shaitan and listen to him? Right? How could you? He, and he would flog her a hundred lashes. So this is another, you know, uh, longer of the story. I'm not going to go into that. But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Flog, you know, hit her once with this thing, and it will be enough for your your oath." Which it didn't, um, you know, uh, not flog her a hundred times. So uh, upon this, he said, "Indeed, upon this, this is when he said, indeed, uh, uh, Shaitan has uh, afflicted me with calamity and torment.'" Uh, upon this when he saw that even his wife is turning to shaitan but you know that has was affected by this was this is when allah, he he complained to allah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his supplication in other narrations it said he was afflicted for a year so many years and his wife would tell him why don't you make dua and he would say how many years of goodness have did we have 20 years or 30 years 40 we had so many years of goodness and this is just what eight years or 10 years so how can I complain? He would, he would, that's how he would respond. But here we see that even his body was so afflicted that his, they said his, his skin was falling off. His like uh, flesh was falling off. Right. And this, when he can't, comes, but he's, what is this? He complains. He says, Oh Allah, the shaitan has touched me with, with weakness, with uh, hurt and adab, with torture. So, and, you know, and, and then he makes the dua. And this is the way of our prophets. This is the way of our prophets to come. Yes, if you've if you've had pain, if you've come, if you're weak, 
come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your weakness. Come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. I'm, I'm not going to be able to go into the story of Sina Ibrahim and I say, I think it's very important. There is something very important in that inshallah, um, maybe we can do another session next time to complete it. But I want to, the one thing that I want to, um, you know, kind of give a uh, summary of is that, you know, if you have, if you've lost children, um, you know, remember that the Prophet already said, said every every kind of healing and every kind of mending is in our deen. If there is, if, for example, those who have lost children or lost your loved one, anyone, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says, this is Sahih Bukhari, right? This from, um, Imam Bukhari and put it in Sahih. said, there is no, I have no other reward than uh, uh, Jannah for a believing servant, slave of mine, who remains patient um, after I have taken away his Safi, his beloved one. I have, uh, so that is, uh, you know, remember that even, you know, the person who was even a miscarriage, we have so much healing in our tradition, what our Prophet ﷺ has promised, the, 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 um, the uh, rewards the that our Prophet ﷺ has promised for those who have lost. And lastly, I want to say, for those who, say we haven't lost anyone, we haven't lost anyone. this hadith is one of my favorite hadith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us afia in our families and our children and our um and not test us. But he he said this is uh he what he, the Prophet said to say to Sayyidah Aisha, he said, um, he said, he said, he said, whoever has two farat, meaning who has lost two children from my ummah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter into Jannah. Say that Aisha says, what if somebody has one? And he said, and one. Oh, and he says, oh, muwafaka, meaning you have that tawfiq, you have that success, you have that tawfiq to ask this question, even if one, he said, even if what? And he said, and she, then she asked, what if he has none? Do you remember say that Aisha, she has no children. She has no children. The wives of the Prophet ﷺ, they have no children. And that could be your pain. That could be your pain. That is a, a great, great pain. Right, that could be your pain. And she said, "What if she, they have none?" And what did he say? So Allah did send it. He said, "Fa ana faratu ummati. I am the fault of my ummah. I am the fault of my ummah. Farat, literally the farat. He says faratan. He says farat is the one who goes. But linguistically, the farat is the one who goes and prepares the place." This is what I heard. This is exactly from Sheikh Abdullah Adami. He goes and prepares the place for you, sets it up. He's like, this is the farat, the, the people who have the two children have gone ahead of you. They're setting up your place in Jannah and they're waiting for you until you come. And that one person, he said, yes, even the one person is going to be your farat and setting it up for you, waiting for you to come and waiting to greet you. You know, this is your house and he's setting it up and decorating whatever. He said, what if they have none? He said, I am the farat of my ummah. I am the one who goes before my ummah. I am the farat of my ummah for every single one of us. Whatever, even it, say you are, mashallah, you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you everything. You have no pain. You have no, he is our farat. He is our farat because every single one of this person in this ummah has felt that pain of not being with the Prophet Sallallahu or losing him. And he said, "None you saw will be with me. There, they have. They will never see a loss like my loss. Right? They will never see a loss like my loss. And um, because this is a talk from pain to power. So, um, in terms of if you have uh, experienced loss, I just want to end by saying that this is some something that you know when I uh, lost my father, like a few years back." Um, I did uh, I did a talk on the passing of the Prophet Sallallahu after that. It was a talk it, in two sessions. It took longer than now. It was about two and a half hours. Um, and I recommend everybody to go. Those who you are experiencing pain or loss, go back to that, inshallah. Um, for all those who signed up, I'll send the recording and also links to that, to link to that as well. Just because when you are engrossed in that when you remember the, his loss everything else becomes easier 
terms of you are completely engrossed in him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everything is, else is gone. And I will say, you know, I lost my father on the first day of Rabi al awwal He's passed away in the evening of, uh, of, it was a Friday night. He passed away Friday night. That was the first day of Rabi al awwal And I had things planned, like mawalid, planned, like, you know, to do molids and stuff throughout the, that month. And I didn't, I, I didn't cancel any of those. And I will say those had that half an hour when I was doing the molid or talking about the Prophet Sallallahu there was no more, there was that, 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 that hole that you feel from loss. It wasn't there. I was complete that in those moments where I was speaking about the Prophet Sallallahu them even during that month. Um, and, you know, even though it was so fresh that that next week, you know, that first Friday, it was doing it every Friday, even that next week, it didn't have that effect because with the Prophet that is a salawat as we Allah pray upon the Prophet on the Prophet was the um he is the medicine of the hearts and it's a cure. And so I remember that and go back to him so loud and him and please forgive me Samia, for just going all over the place and I say Alhamdulillah and Ustad Samia inshallah um if Ustad Sami can you can mention a few things just about your own journey, about your own um mashallah, your um going from pain to power. And I will also say that another thing about the title of this talk is I saw a picture of uh, Maryam also on the side of the Samia's thing. And I, and I mentioned, I was like, she is your superpower. Mashallah. And I, I really believe that, um, that, you know, because from the saying of our beloved Prophet So, the side Samia to Fadlari, Samia. No, no, no need. Alhamdulillah, khair. I, I would rather listen to you than, than myself talk. So, Jazakallah khair, Barakallah fikum, and may Allah accept. And um, Subhanallah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Um, you know, your I didn't have this prepared, Subhanallah, but talking about Ta'if um, reminded me about this situation, and it beautifully transitions. You know, my story with Maryam, who was born with a rare syndrome. Um, I remember. Um, it was a few years ago, and I was in the hospital with my daughter, Maryam, and uh, we didn't know what was going on with her. Like, she had a lot of health issues at the time, and the doctors couldn't pinpoint what it was. So we were just in the hospital, um, subhanAllah, day and night, and I was with her. You know, it was just me and her for, you know, almost weeks on, and we didn't have any answers. And um, alhamdulillah, one of my friends, you know, we have a daily Quran recitation on Zoom. One of my friends, her name is Maryam, actually. Uh, she, you know, popped on and she said, uh, you know, every, for my friends who are going through pain, I usually recite to them uh, dua at ta'if to remind them of the pain that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in. And um, she said to, she encouraged me to recite that dua myself. Uh, and she did even more. What she did, she has a beautiful voice. Um, so she actually sang or, you know, uh, the translation, right? Or like, you know, not really saying, but, you know, like uh, beautified her voice in it. So uh, I have it recorded and she gave me permission to share it uh, with sisters. So I'm going to let you hear it while I'm letting you look at the translation, inshallah. So what she did is that while I was in the hospital with my daughter, Maryam, my friend Maryam recited this to me. And it was, it literally took me through that hospital stay um okay it took me through that hospital stay and it really really anchored me uh subhanallah and i was reciting it day and night day and night all the time so you know may allah reward her uh for that inshallah so let me let you all listen to it inshallah to you my lord i complain of my weakness Lack of support and the humiliation I am made to receive. Most merciful of those who show mercy. 
person who receives me with hostility or to an enemy you have given power over me as long as you are not displeased with me I do not care what I face but your well-being would be more expensive for me. I seek refuge in the light of your face, by which all darkness is dispelled and illuminated. In both this life and the life to come are put in the right course. May it never be that I should incur your wrath or be the subject of your anger. To you I appeal, to you I appeal until I earn your pleasure. There's no mind nor power except through you. So, subhanAllah, may Allah reward her, make dua for her. You can imagine, you know, what this um, did to me in that moment, uh, subhanAllah. And, you know, what a gift to have um, this dua um, for us in the way that the Prophet wasallam channeled his pain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what I really, really particularly love about this dua is what happens after it. So right now, if you know we were to follow the instructions of these prophets that came before us, and if we were to channel our pain to Allah, how would we do it? We would do it in a dua, essentially, or in prayer, right? Especially in prayer. But subhanAllah, think of when the gift of prayer came. It actually came after this dua ta'if, right? We were not gifted the five prayers a day except after the Prophet ﷺ made this dua, which means that we are all gifted with this divine connection of prayer because Rasulullah ﷺ was one time in pain and channeled that pain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this way, it tells us that, you know, our pain is not just our pain, right? That, you know, our pain is, could be a gift to others around us. Imagine how honored and elevated and, and, and uh, special the Prophet ﷺ is that because of this pain he was in, we all are gifted with a divine connection. SubhanAllah, just think of that for a moment, that we would not be able to channel our pain to Allah without him showing us how to channel our pain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Um, so... Um, when I was in, in, in the hospital uh, with Maryam and you know there was a lot of different times where I'm in the hospital uh, with Maryam and she was born with a rare syndrome called child syndrome which um, you know you can look it up about only 60 people in the world had it and half her body didn't grow so she looked very different when when she was born and I didn't find out I didn't find out that she was gonna have a rare syndrome until maybe later in my pregnancy about six months uh, pregnant and I remember immediately it was like um, this this ache, like, and, and the ache wasn't really because like, why is this happening? But it was me, like, how, how am I gonna do this, right? Like, how am I gonna be able to care for her? 
And I remember, um, you know, a distant relative, you know, felt sorry for me when, when I was pregnant. And uh, she said, you're not going to be able to handle this. I remember her words, like, you're not going to be able to handle this. And, I, and she was saying it out of almost like pity and um, maybe, you know, reassurance. I, I'm not sure what she was thinking, you know, may Allah, you know, reward her. Um, but subhanAllah, when she told me that, because alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already gifted me, you know, the ability to always uh, have the Quran with me. I remember my instant thought went to لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها that Allah doesn't bear a soul more than what they can bear. So if Allah is gifting this to me or giving this decree to me, then obviously He knows I can handle it. And subhanAllah, throughout my journey, she's eight years now, alhamdulillah, you know, throughout my journey, different ayat would pop out, right? Like, and for instance, the beginning of Surah Al-Mulk, لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ, right? أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا That Allah will give you uh, moments that test you to see who is best, to bring the best out of you. And, you know, sometimes we think we're being buried, right? Because of the pain we're in. But essentially, Allah is pulling us to the life that He knew we could have. Because if you... You know, if I, you know, just to speak of myself, like I never thought I would be in the, the field of special needs, right? Or be speaking to special need mothers or having a, a daughter who has special needs in my home. Um, I never liked, you know, I never thought I would be good in medicine. I remember, you know, my father, you know, make dua for him. He's going through health issues. My father, you know, is a retired um, uh, physician. And I remember when I was wanting to study, I told him anything but medicine. And subhanAllah, now he always tells me, you know, he was like, I always, he said, he tells me, I give you your, your medical degree, you, you have it. Like, he's like, to him, I already have my medical degree because I, I'm functioning, you know, a, a mini hospital in my home, alhamdulillah. So um, all these ayat, you know, reminded me that Allah is pulling you to a potential that you don't know you have. And that's why the Quran is so incredibly important because it's literally our anchor like you know sometimes we have these affirmations keep going you can do it and these are just like worldly affirmations but when your affirmation is you know the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're like holding you through your life these are these are the words you can bank on more than the words of my mom or my dad or my friends these are the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and, and not only does he give you words of of affirmations that you can do this because he knows you can, but he also gives you examples of the prophets that, like that uh, Ustada Shaista, Sheikh Shaista shared with us, right? SubhanAllah. So these stories are, are um, examples for you, right? They're there, not just, it's not like a feel good story, but it shows you what your future potentially can look like, right? That you can transform your pain into this power um, in the same way. So um, with that being said, you know, I remember um, for the, you, you guys probably all know about our three winners, you know, may Allah have mercy on them, Diya, Yusur and Razan, they were in Chapel Hill, um, they were killed about 10 years ago now, subhanAllah, may Allah have mercy on them. And in a documentary where um, the brother of Yusur and Razan was, you know, speaking about the moment he knew uh, of his sister's passing. Um, his father tells him on the phone, why do we study the Quran? Why is it that we're in Quran classes? Why is it that we're holding on to the words of Allah? Like, wh why do we immerse ourselves in the Quranic ocean? Why? It's for these moments. It's for the moments where you receive this phone call, your sisters have been killed. Who else are you going to hold on to other than Allah? And subhanAllah, not only will Allah allow you to hold on to him, but to thrive through that circumstance, like wallahi ajib, right? It's amazing that not only will Allah hold you through it, but he'll help you thrive through it. I remember when my daughter was uh, about maybe three years old, they told me, you know, because of her scoliosis, she has a, a, a curved spine. They said, you know, there's something called equestrian therapy or horse therapy where she can ride a horse and there's research that shows that it helps correct the spine. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like, I can't, Maryam was so tiny. She's like a few pounds and you're telling me she's going to ride a horse. Okay, like, let's do it. 
So I remember I got to this farm, which was in the middle of nowhere, and the owner of the farm comes, and there's so many horses, so many kids who have, you know, different needs, subhanAllah, you know, different medical conditions, and each of them are riding on a horse. And then there's Maryam riding on a horse, and there's three people holding Maryam, and she's like laughing, and she's enjoying, like she's this tiny on this huge horse. It was such a, you know, beautiful scene to witness. And I'm asking the mom who's there, who's the owner of the horse, and I said, you know, of the, of the whole farm, actually, I said, you know, what made you start this? And she told me her story. She said that years ago, her son was diagnosed at about eight or nine years old with a rare um, condition in his spine. And she said, I couldn't find any answers until I've dug, dug, dug and did research. And I saw there's something called equestrian therapy, horse therapy, and it could help. So she said, you know, I like stopped my career. I invested in this farm, invested in a horse, learned about horse therapy, hired, you know, a therapist. And then he got much better. And then she said, I can't keep this for myself. And then she ended up starting this huge facility. And now from her pain, one person was in pain, me and all these other moms are benefiting from her pain that once existed, subhanAllah. And that reminds me of how Allah tells Maryam alayhi salam in the Quran in Surah Maryam, you know, she says, Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha. Like, I wish I had died before this. I wish I was long forgotten because she's in pain. But then Allah, just two verses later, tells her, Huzzi ilayki bijazan nakhla. Shake the palm tree. And if you look closely at the ayat, you might miss it. You might miss this very intricate but very, very important detail, which when she arrives and makes dua of this pain, right? And she says, Ya Allah, I wish I didn't. Uh, exist, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highlights that she arrived at the palm tree in that ayah. She arrives at the palm tree and says these words. But then Allah says, shake the palm tree. So it's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding her to shake the place of pain. That pain, you need to shake it. Do something with it. Because رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا It wasn't, Allah didn't give you this pain in vain. Right? This pain has a purpose. It can move you. It can move the people around you. Right? And once we understand this, it completely shifts everything around us. And these ayat really helped me in my moment, you know, that moment, because, I, you know, me and, and other people who have, you know, we're all tested in different ways. Some people are tested with, you know, medical health issues or chronic pain. You know, some people are tested with uh, uh, children who have medical conditions, you know. You know, everyone is tested in a different way. You know, lack of children, as Sheikh Asraista said, you know, their, or their children passing. But subhanAllah, what we can do with that pain, even if it looks different, is find Allah through it and ask Allah, Ya Allah, what are you showing me through this? What, what is it that you are showing me through this pain? What can I do with it? And once we come to Allah with that, it's like a door of wonders open to us subhanAllah you know I don't think I could have you know I tell everybody this I don't think I could have started Quranic Ocean if I did not have a daughter who has special needs because you know I was so sunk into this idea like raise kids bring them make them go to school you know you, know, you want you want to put bow ties in their hair and have this like ideal picture perfect family you know going to eat together um, you know which is not um, not necessarily a bad thing, but what happens is that you can get sucked into it so easily, and you don't you you forget why why you exist to begin with. So when you know, I I realize that okay, I have this task, I have this daughter. Um, it made me realize the the fragility of this world, the the fleeting uh, life of this world which isn't it worth it a pain that pulls you to the purpose of life is absolutely worth it right? and we see that in dua life well, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is literally bleeding right and yet he's saying yeah Allah, if so long as you're not displeased with me it doesn't matter right and so subhanallah that pain 
not only can Allah be pleased with you in that pain, but even more pleased with you because of the pain and what you do with it. Right? Perhaps it's pulling you towards a relationship with Allah that you never knew could exist. And I'll share this story with you all. I remember when um, I had my older daughter, I have an older daughter, Tasneem, alhamdulillah, she's you know healthy. And when I had her, I used to always make this dua, um, رَبِّ جَعَلْنِي مُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ ذُرِيَتِي you know, Shaykh Hashayista couldn't talk about, we didn't have time to talk about Prophet Ibrahim, but here's his dua, subhanAllah. Um, that he says, Oh Allah, um, make me an establisher of prayer and also let my uh, generation after me, right, my lineage follow in that, let them be those who submit and prostrate and pray to you, Ya Allah. So I remember I used to always make this dua in hopes that my daughter Tasneem, she's going to be one who prays, you know, she's going to be on her A game and prayer. Like, this is the purpose of life. But then, subhanAllah, when Maryam came and, you know, she's growing up in my house household. She's, you know, vet independent. She's on a ventilator. She can't eat. She's on, She has a G-tube to eat. Uh, she can't speak uh, verbally. Um, so all these, you know, medical conditions that she had made me, in my mind, keep the dua that I was making of Ibrahim salam for Tasneem. Because I was like, you know, Maryam is special, you know, you know, she's not mukallafa, perhaps, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not, you know, she, she's, she has, she's special. So the dua of prayer, I'm making it for tasneem. And I had this very limited mindset, you know, as many of us may have, subhanAllah. And then I remember one day, uh, the, the way my daughter would communicate with us is that she would spell. She learned to spell, alhamdulillah, through speech therapy. So that's how until now she communicates with me she, through spelling. So she wrote for me one day and she was like like come see this Danny. she was like pointing to the tablet like come see and she had written s-u-l-l-e-e -E. s-u-l-l-e-e -E. and i was like looking at her and she's like so excited to show, to show me this word and i'm like that's not a word like and then i'm like salli 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 and then as soon as I say salli, she starts laughing. She's like, yes. So when I usually tell Tasneem, my older daughter, let's pray, die salli, like, which means in Arabic, come pray. Like it's a verb, come pray, salli. So Maryam, my daughter, who I discounted from this dua, is now telling me, I want to pray. Like, let me salli with you, right? So I remember it wasn't even a time of prayer at the time, but I was just so blown away that she's asking me to pray and she spelled it in a unique way salli like she you know made it this arabic word into english subhanallah right she transliterated essentially right uh, salli uh, to pray so then i put my hijab on and started praying with her and she is like a kid in a candy shop like so happy and i started praying and i started reading from this dua in Surah Ibrahim, Rabbi ja'alni muqeema salati. And I am just crying because I'm like, Ya Allah, forgive me. Like, Ya Allah, Zamahni, like, forgive me that I limited you. Like, that I limited the power that I, I, I thought Maryam was not <laughs> going to be from those who pray, pray, subhanAllah. But until now, you know, she's eight years old, subhanAllah. This happened a few years ago. But um, anybody who knows who comes to my house, like her world is the five prayers like literally like she's like in Burmaja, like she has a internal clock of the adhan my sister came over recently and she types to her have you offered asr prayer yet question mark <laughs> like you gotta pray you gotta pray and and she always tells me mama duhur is at 1 27 p.m today right like subhanallah the, the five prayers are her her world and um I would not have been able to see these wonders without the pain I went through, right? And perhaps continue to go through it because it is challenging, right? Uh, n nobody's saying, hey, you going through pain means you being numb and not feeling and you're just like in a Jannah world. No, like we have to be realistic. We're, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna ha come with all these feelings. We're gonna feel broken, but that brokenness is taking you to a place of wholeness, right? It's taking you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And isn't that better than pretending that we're whole here, right? Because imagine if we thought that 
this dunya was the place of wholeness. That is eternal brokenness, actually. But rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifting us with moments where we are broken to show us the one who is whole perpetually, right? And that we were not created for this world, but we were created for a more eternal world that is the place of wholeness. And subhanAllah, this takes me to what Allah says in Surah Az-Zumar, when the people of Jannah are entering Jannah, the angels tell them, Salamun alaykum tibtum fadkhuluha khalidin. That peace be upon you tibtum. This is the place of wholesomeness. Now you're whole. Right? Perhaps you in, in dunya you were taking your brokenness to Allah. You kept taking your brokenness to Allah. But here you're patched together. And to a point that you don't even forget the voids that you once had. Tibtum, you're completely healed, you're completely wholesome, you're completely fulfilled in a way that those moments of brokenness are non-existent. So enter this Jannah in this way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be from these people who are told this. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you all. Alhamdulillah, it feels like we're in a in a mini Jannah here. Alhamdulillah, together may Allah allow us to gather in, in Jannah as we gathered here. Um, and please keep actually Maryam in your du'a. We believe she has the flu. Uh, so keep her in your du'a. She's been uh, having some health issues uh, recently, subhanAllah. And also, please forgive me. I just noticed that it looks like I'm in a construction <laughs> site here. But uh, my older daughter, Tasneem, uh, her Eid gift was to paint her room. So this is her room and these are the potential uh, colors, <laughs> inshallah. I just noticed that I'm here, subhanAllah. So, jazakallah khair. And Sheikh Asais, that was so nice to be with you. Alhamdulillah, I don't know if you have anything to add, inshallah, before we... Jazakallah khair. And that was, uh, that was so... I, I didn't know that about your daughter, that she was like so concerned. I remember you sending me the what your mother, your blessed mother said about her when she was praying. And I thought that was so sweet, but I didn't know it was a regular occurrence. It's amazing. Allahu Akbar, mashallah. That's just everything. Um, it, it just, it's so uh, appropriate for it to come together. You know, one of the things that I, I did want to mention, because there's, uh, this was, of course, in the Ibrahim story, which I didn't get to, but for our our beloved Prophet, وسلم, when after the dua, does she want to type? She wants, to say she wants me to charge this. <laughs> oh. All right, go ahead. Make dua for us, Maryam. Make dua for Sheikh Shaista, okay? For all of us, everybody here. Okay? okay inshallah. All right, go ahead, Sheikh. Yeah, so I was saying, you know, subhanAllah, after the dua, which I forgot to mention, and you mentioned what happened after about the prayer, but even immediately what happened after, subhanAllah, was that, you know, when the angel of the mountains came and he said, would, would you like that I crush the mountains over them? Right? And he said, um, no, perhaps there will be people who worship Allah. And that, you know, Sheikh Samer said explicitly, the, 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 what he is talking about, he's not talking about Laif, the um, city that the angel of mountains was saying, shall, shall, shall I crush the mountains over them? Was Mecca, this, which is two, between two mountains, the city of Mecca. And meaning, you know, you've gone through so much pain because of who it was. The city of Ta'if was just these past 10 days, but it was because of the Quraysh, of the, it's been the past 10 years, right? And so um, the the answer, that was the answer uh, of you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the angels, but what did he say? He said, no, perhaps people will come out that will, after them that will worship Allah. And that is what happened. I feel like, you know, yes, we, we are only here today because of that mercy, because of that mercy that Allah, the, the Prophet said, no, let the people of Mecca live. And once the people of Mecca, you know, he allowed them to live, then it's, you know, obviously we came after them, you know, so it was, it was through his, it's through that, that, you know, that pain that was that because it came, went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and took that madad from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it became, 
that power that he he turned it around said you know no it's to 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 be to have that mercy and to um to you know be a salvation for all of us so it's a lot it's a lot of um i did i don't know if there's time to do some reflect reflections if there is or would you have to sign off soon no, no, we can do some reflections, inshallah, bismillah. Yeah. Do you want me to stop so what, recording for reflections or keep? Uh, we can still record Um, because I, I don't know if are we sharing or not. I think I can. we can just ask them to share during the uh, on the chat, inshallah. So um, what I wanted to uh, just have you all reflect on is just something, just a point of pain on in your life. And just how can you take that? how can you take that and turn it into your power? Because one of, one of the things that, um, uh, that, you know, Jazallah Khair and Usada Sami have pointed out is that when you take that pain and turn it into a power, you know, of course we get our madad from our deen, but also to turn it into our power that, you know, find that, use that as our power. Like for example, to, for someone who is being, um, who has maybe been divorced or has lost children to use that to to go into that to to help other women through that process to help other women um you know uh, tra traverse those terrains that they if they haven't to help others through that as as they've gone through it they've already you've, it's something that they've already done and gone through and to use that as your you know, power to, to help others through that. So that's another way to, you know, to use your pain into power. So if we can just take a few minutes, perhaps, um, and if you want to put it in the chat, I think that would be really helpful for everybody that how is it there's something like a, something that you went through, but you changed it into um, something that could help others. Or not help others, but just change it into uh, something that was powerful for you, that you're changed from your pain into your power. So if we have any uh, shares, I think we can even perhaps unmute um, them as well. But um, I do want to say that, you know, there's, uh, for ex in, as an example, um, women who've gone through um, uh, difficulty in their um, uh, even in their uh, marriages or in their you know with divorce and with that that how you know um, they can use that to um, to kind of empower other women and uh, you know just support other women through their um, through their journeys or through um, and I know like I've had uh, uh, friends who are who are coaches and they've come to that coaching they've come to, come to coaching because they 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 were in a place where they needed coaching they needed coaching for themselves and because their you know their uh home life was so like messed up they needed you know therapy or coaching or whatever it is and then they 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 became coaches themselves helping other women because of what they went through. And then that is so much, um, it's so much closer because it became, becomes like, they're so empathic because they understand exactly, they understand what somebody is going through so intimately. And it becomes so much more powerful to, um, uh, to help someone when you have come with that kind of background. Um, I see someone here is, uh, Sister Munira says, I was at a low point a few years ago and took coaching and made the decision to help women uh, through seeking validation in Allah, uh, not people. I took a coaching certificate. Alhamdulillah. SubhanAllah. Similar, uh, just like the uh, story I mentioned. Jazakallah uh, khayran. MashaAllah. So I think, you know, um, it's important to, you know, whatever it is you're going through, inshallah, maybe uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us all afia and give us well-being and give relief to our brothers and sisters in Gaza, of course. And uh, let's just remember that when we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it, we, that is, um, we come, we come to him through that. That is our, that, that is where we can be empowered spiritually and even outside, um, 
uh, physically as well. Uh, here I see Sister Maham say, I think it's how I just live and show up. I thought I wasn't doing anything about my pain, but my biggest pain point is my family. Alhamdulillah, I never feel loved. Live my whole life with deep empathy and incredible capacity to hold space to be an ally and show up and fight for others, myself and what it is, inshallah, mashallah. That's, um, uh, that's really empowering. And do you know, um, I remember, so Sam, I know, know if you've heard this, but too, but you know, there are people who, when they've experienced like abuse, they're either, um, unfortunately, they can either be um, advocates against that abuse or they become the abusers. And I feel like what we see in Gaza, people who've be, have experienced abuse and they become the abuser, right? And doing the exact same things to people who, what they, what they once experienced. But, um, you know, the, the, it's the pain, the power is when you actually can turn around and become an advocate against that oppression. Right? One thing I was recently reflecting on, Sister Aisha says that after a period of pain I had been through in my life, the dua that emanates from this, um, from the heart uh, for fellow believers is so different. So sincere for them and heartfelt when seeing someone else in pain. SubhanAllah. That's, uh, that's so true. Going through a divorce, I've learned to forgive for the sake of Allah. I mean, subhanAllah, what a, what a, what a superpower that is. <laughs> what a superpower that is. What, you know, just to, to learn how to forgive for the sake of Allah. That's amazing because there are people and it's not, it's not like you have to forgive. You don't have to forgive. I mean, that's your like, right. Right. But to forgive for the sake of Allah is, is truly a superpower because that is something that, um, you know, less power. That, that's, you know, in the level of, you know, that's something that the Prophet said to Sayyidina Abu Bakr, you know, don't, don't you, wouldn't you love that Allah forgives you? Right. And it's something that, that, that's, the, that's high level because Sayyidina Abu Bakr, it's like, like he had to forgive, but he did it for the sake of Allah. Mashallah. Um, it says with what very little Islamic knowledge, I turned to Allah and he was always there. Just take your broken heart to him. Mashallah. MashaAllah, JazakAllah khairan. Um, Jaren, Jaren says, loss of only son has been opening for my eyes to hereafter, Allah gifting me the reality of the dunya and attaching me to the hereafter. Um, I feel, um, you know, just recently, actually, this this weekend, uh, a, a very close, like, um, a childhood friend, uh, I just learned that her their, her son passed away just not even, you know, 10 days ago. And it was very, uh, it was very heartbreaking. Uh, that news was very heartbreaking. And just going into the, the talk, I was remembering that. And, you know, even after um, Ramadan, just the uh, loss of remembering the loss of our Sheikh's son, Sayyidina Mu'az and Nas, um, which was last Ramadan, it happened uh, last Ramadan or in Shawwal, he passed away the third of Shawwal. And even the way that seeing how the Sheikh has changed, seeing how his family has changed, one of the things he said was um, in, in a talk after this, after his son passed away, he says, you know, if you asked me, he said, I just lost my son. And he said, if you asked me this question before, I think it was about studying maybe going to university or studying medicine. And he is a medical doctor. But he said, if you asked me before my son passed away, I would have probably given you another answer. But he said, now I just I just lost my son. And he said, my answer to you is just do anything that takes you closer to Allah. You know, and it really, it, you know, that it was, it's a very wise answer. But at the same, you know, it, you feel that how different your life, how, how different it changes when you have suffer real loss and um also how just but you become so like it's almost like you have this focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is that is a, a superpower isn't it it's like that that you're so um that you you understand you know how the sister is saying that the law of the silver sons you understand what's important and what's not what can be let go so um mashallah jazakum al khair may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, cause give us all afia and healing and uh, sister, uh, would you like to uh, if you can please 
close up and uh, with the du'as. And I would just say, inshallah, uh, whoever's signed up, inshallah, I will send them links for the talk on um, uh, losing uh, the the loss of the Prophet them. And also for those, some of you mentioned about divorce, I do have this talk on uh, taking the taboo out of divorce. I'll, I'll send that as a link as well, inshallah. So, so Samia, inshallah, we can close up with your da'a. Um, I just wanted to add uh, quickly that um, my mom uh, has this tadabbur uh, on the verse in Surah Al-Kahf, Fa'u ila al-Kahfi, where Allah commands us to go into the cave. Um, and she says, you know, sometimes we have our own caves. Oh, no, did you go like we, feels that we feel like um, Allah maybe is secluding us in the pain or in the brokenness or in the loneliness. But she said sometimes that is Allah secluding us to show us everybody who's eventually going to leave us and who will always be there for us. So, you know, sometimes we can like wallow in the pain and the loneliness and, and like nobody has what I have. But sometimes, you know, if we uh, use that loneliness or, or circumstance to come to Allah, um, then we find the one who never leaves us. Um, so it's, a, it's, it's just a beautiful way to look at that. You know, sometimes Allah strips you of everybody to show to reveal himself to you and who he is uh, to you um, and then the other thing is that you know subhanallah just in this you know short zoom call uh, we we have so much you know if looking in the chat of how so many people are are different are, are um, going through different um, circumstances right of health issues of miscarriages of their children passing you know subhanallah so many different things and it just goes to show you that you know no one has a perfect life in this dunya and sometimes when we're the ones being tested greatly, uh, it's easy to think that no one is going through or ever went through what I'm going through. But subhanAllah, just a short Zoom call of, you know, from pain to power, we see like, look what these sisters are going through. Like this dunya is not meant, you know, this is Dar al right? This is a place of, of trial and the, the akhirah is the Dar al a place of reward. So to always remember that you're not the only one going through pain. Um, and to, to keep others in your du'a because you know, we all have our different circumstances, subhanAllah. Um, and the last thing before du'a is, is a, a sister, I believe Umm Muhammad had asked a question about tawakkul um, and how we can submit to Allah through the pain. And the first thing I will, I will say is, <clears throat> you know, sometimes we want to, like, especially right now, like if somebody is at the, at the beginning of pain or at the beginning of the news, sometimes um, we use faith to almost robot through and pretend that we want to be here right which is beautiful right alhamdulillah we want to we want to be here with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but also we're human and you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't expect us to be something we're not so um it's okay to feel sad it's okay to feel uh, grief it's okay to feel broken you know those are all uh, human feelings you don't have to robot through because of your faith because actually it is our faith that gives us permission to feel, gives us permission to uh, label our feelings and to know what we're going through and to, you know, take that feeling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remember one of the shaykh told me, he said, you know, the feeling you have, whatever it is, you can take it to Allah. And that even the feeling of, Ya Allah, I'm doubting you, you can take that doubt to Allah. Like, can you imagine, subhanAllah, like, that's the type of, of, uh, a relationship Allah wants you to have with him that even when you're doubting him come to him what is the right there's no um, refuge from Allah except back to him right um, subhanallah so um, just wanted to share that and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us transform our uh, pain to power and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us uh, be okay being human and feeling our feelings and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gift us with sisterhood and companionship for him and help us realize that what we're going through for is the akhira and the perfection in the next life and not in this world Ameen Rabbil Alameen Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in Ya Allah Ya Kareem we ask you to send your Peace and blessings and mercy on our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, we thank you for sending us the perfect role model. Ya Allah, we thank you, Ya Allah. We thank you for sending us a nur, the light, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to show us the path 
Ya Allah, we, we thank you for the hadith that was preserved for us, for us to know how to come to you. Ya Allah, we thank you for the perfect example you, as, you have sent us of how to transform our pain to power, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Thank you for helping us accept our humanity. Thank you for the emotions you have built in us that we can access you through them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, allow us and enable us to use our pain as an avenue to you. Ya Allah, when any one of us sisters is going through immense pain, immense hardship, we ask you, Ya Allah, to help her recognize that this can be used as a tool to access you, the divine, the creator, the most merciful. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, help us lead, help us follow the example of Ayyub alayhi salam and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the prophets who channeled their pain to you and who used their pain to access you. Ya Allah, Ya Allah, protect us from succumbing to the pain and instead help us submit to you and only you. Ya Allah, help us go to you and flee to you in the beginning and in the end and the middle and throughout our lives, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Help us always see you and your mercy through every circumstance that we're going through, Ya Rabbul Alameen. And help us, give us people who love you who take us towards you higher and higher and higher. Ya Allah, we ask you to help us be people of Quran and lovers of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ya Allah, we ask you to make this Zoom call a witness for us and not against us. And let the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recognize us on that day, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, let us be from those who drink from his blessed hands, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, enable, enable us, Ya Allah, because of this call, because of our love for you and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because of the pain that we channeled to you and used for your sake, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you to make us from the people who enter Jannah without hisab, Ya Rabbul Alameen, without any reckoning, Ya Rabbul Alameen, who will be from Ashab al-Firdaus, from the people of the highest levels of Jannah, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to help us always, always remember the Akhirah and help us always remember our purpose in this life and not be diverted because of the dunya that we're trying to chase, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Help us chase what is real and eternal with you and not the temporary, Ya Rabbul Alameen. Allahumma salli wa sallim mubarak ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbana taqabal minna innaka anta samiyu al-alim wa tuba alayna innaka anta tawabu al-rahim. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us ease, all of us, and to thank uh, Sheikh Shaista for you know, gifting us with this ability. You know, it was her idea to have this class. So, Jazakallah Khair, Sheikh Shaista. Wa iyaakum, Jazakallah Khair. And just also, you know, um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the ummah ease, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask, we ask it to make this, uh, you know, uh, this, it's a small thing, but we, نقدمه, we present it as, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it, and uh, may it be, be a source of ease for our brothers and sisters in Palestine, of course, and all over the world, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Jazakallah Khairan, Jazakallah Khairan, Samia and Maryam, for a special guest appearance. <laughs> Jazakallah <laughs> 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 <laughs>